Hello, my name is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to configure Avaya B5800 branch gateway as a HTTP file server host for SIP endpoints. Before we get started with the configuration, there are a few notables. The Avaya B5800 branch gateway includes H323 firmware but the B5800 can also be configured as an HTTP server to support firmware upgrade for both the 96XX and 96X1 SIP phones. This capability has been made available since the Avaya Branch Gateway release of 6.1 Service Pack 2. There are times in a customer deployed environment where WAN bandwidth may be restricted, especially on the data side, and this will dictate the suitability of making a B5800 the in-branch firmware file repository serving all local site endpoints. When enabling SIP phones you will see a configuration edit today where we add a no user source number enable SIP firmware download and this should be configured when you've turned the B5800 into an HTTP firmware file server for the SIP endpoints. It will optimize traffic in and out of the B5800 and make sure that the primary traffic is for voice processing and not for distributing data. Also note that when upgrading SIP phones prior to 6.0 Service Pack 2, we should limit the concurrent amount to 10 and when upgrading past Service Pack 2 or later, you can increase that simultaneous upgrade to 50 phones. Also provided here is a link to the 96X1 phones, SIP firmware download, and B1500 centralized branch deployments document where you can find additional details. Our first step is to check the LAN1 IP address of the system. Once we verify that address, we're going to head back to the system tab and enter the LAN1 IP address as our HTTP server IP address, effectively setting the B1500 up as a file server and then we're going to tell it to make use of the memory card, the embedded internal memory card for storage and then we'll click OK. So now it's time to set up the DHCP server on LAN 1 on the B5800. So we'll set the initial address pool to 50 to cover 50 phones and we'll now select the server option for DHCP mode and click into advanced to properly set our DHCP scope. Before we adjust our scope, we're going to check the tick box to say apply these settings for Avaya IP phones only. So we'll only respond to IP requests from Avaya phones. So now we're going to adjust the pool, give it the start addressing that's required, double check the subnet mask, and then set our default router, otherwise known as default gateway, to the appropriate setting. And once again, readjust the scope pool to 50 in this case. Click OK on the form and OK again and our DHCP configuration is complete. An important step as noted earlier in the notables is that we go to the no user account and under its source numbers we're going to add in a code with a value so you'll see me select add and then under the source number value we're going to enter our code which is enable SIP firmware download as you see there on the screen. We'll select OK and approve the form. This important setting will help prioritize voice traffic on the switch over firmware downloads for the 96X1 phones and also help identify the 96X1 endpoints to the B5800 core unit. Now that we've made the last of our configuration changes, it's time to hit the save icon and send up the configuration. Send it back to the B5800 unit with the proper credentials you see we merge the config back into the runtime. Before I demonstrate how to upload files to the B1500 I just want to include two quick reference slides. The bold bullets are the files that are required for the 96xx files. The last bullet you see the optional files that can be installed and uploaded up to the B1500 but you have to at least send up the boot application file, the SIP phone application file, and the 96xx upgrade.txt file, which is an unedited file. Leave it as is and send that up to the B5800. Similar for the 96x1 phones, we have in, again in bold the required files, the application tar and the kernel root 
file system tar and then the 96x1s upgrade.txt which again you leave alone um, as far as editing and you send it up to the b5800 and then again the last billet shows that there are the optional files including the cert files the aim release language files and ringtone or extended ringtone files they are all optional so I've downloaded the SIP firmware and exploded it to my file system and as you see here take a look at some of the files we're about to upload to the B5800 and what we're going to do is go into the manager client the IP office or B5800 manager um, the IP office manager controls the B5800 and instead of the configuration side we're going to go to advanced embedded file management and enter in the file management side of the B5800 unit and as you see here um, typical login is required just as it is in the security or the configuration side and we're going to start to look at the SD card file system um, you see it's a 4 gig SD card secure digital card and we're using about a gig of space we're going to go under system and primary folder and that's where we have our bins and runtime configs and we're going to now choose upload and upload files as you see me doing um, live in demonstration I'm actually uploading a required file to the B5800 unit now I'm going to upload the um, SIP application file so again I'll find that file on my file system scroll down to it and upload that file you see that file proceeding in real time up to the B5800 unit to finish off the demonstration we're going to take a look at Sysmon or System Monitor and there's an important trace option, trace filter option to set. So under services tab you'll see that I set the HTTP filter option and that's an important setting for any time you're going to be troubleshooting HTTP transactions in and out of the B5800 core unit. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.